Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Luke chapter 12 and I'll be reading verses 13 through 21. The, the hymn that's being spoken of here is Jesus and this is what it says. And someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Beware. And be on your guard against every form of greed, for not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a certain rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no place to store my crops? And he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you. And now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Pray with me. Lord, to be rich... Rich toward you. Uh, it requires strength we don't have. And I, I ask that here in worship, you, you breathe the power of your Holy Spirit that we receive your riches, your grace, and we give thanks. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 12. Luke describes the scene that's going on here. He says, and they were stepping on each other. So many people were crowded all around. They were stepping on each other. And Jesus begins to preach. And in his sermon, a heckler calls out. That's where we started this morning. This heckler saying, teacher, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, most preachers... Mm, really don't want hecklers in the middle of their sermons. And I don't think Jesus is any different here because when they got, you can almost hear the whine in the guy's voice. Teacher, tell my brother to behave is really what he's saying. And give me a part of the inheritance or more of the inheritance. And Jesus says, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? Well, that's, after all, that's kind of what we all want, isn't it? A righteous judge out there, somebody who's going to make people do, behave and do what they ought to do and act right and be straight and at least what we think they ought to do and what we think that how they ought to behave. And, you know, there ought to, wouldn't we all just love someone out there just make people do what they ought to do? And Jesus says that's not his role. And then... He gives the man a parable. A parable. And the parable starts off with an incredible insight. We read it this morning. It, that he says, and a certain rich man was on land that was very productive. 
land that was very productive. I say that's insightful because the biggest temptations in life don't come in adversity. They come in prosperity. They come in abundance. They come in the land that's, that's, that's very productive. This wasn't leftover land. This wasn't land to be discarded, land that he had never used before. This land was very productive. And he had barns on that land. And the barns, whenever someone builds a barn, they build barn with a little bit of calculation and a whole lot of imagination. The, the, the calculation is, what has the land done in the past? And the imagination is, well, what will the land do in the future? If you build a barn only to the size of your average crop, about half the time you'll be throwing away crop that you can't get in the barn. But if you build the barn too big, and it's, it's larger than any crop you'll ever have, then you've spent land and resources on something that'll never be used. That your imagination is, is, is for the largest crop. The largest regular crop that, that he thought he would get. Well, he got even more than that. So much so that he said, well, I don't want just my largest crop. I want more and I'll tear down these barns and, and I'll take in everything for myself. That night he dies. And when he dies, that's when God steps into the story that Jesus tells. And God says to him he says you fool this very night your soul is required of you and now who will own what you have prepared he doesn't call him evil he doesn't call him bad he calls him foolish because he's invested his life he's invested his life on something that's now gone and Jesus ends up by saying, so is the man who lays up his treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. To be rich toward God, what does that mean? Rich toward God. That's what I want to talk about this morning. To be rich toward God means that we live faithfully. To be rich toward God means that we live faithfully. A lot of times when we talk about faith, the first thing we think of is to have faith in ourselves. And as, as long as we're well equipped, we have what we, we think we need and, and we work hard at it, we can have confidence and faith in ourselves. That's not being rich toward God. That's being rich toward self. You go a little deeper than that and a lot of times folks think, okay, well, what does it mean? Maybe faith is to have faith in a code, or a standard, or what's right, and what's right is right, and what's wrong. Well, that's a little deeper, but that's not what Jesus is calling us to either. It's just a code. That f f to, to live faithfully is something more than that. Back in 1962, 14-year-old boy, Robert White, wrote to President John F. Kennedy's secretary, her name was Evelyn Lincoln, he wrote and, and asked for the president's autograph, his signature. Well, Evelyn Lincoln was tickled that a 14-year-old boy would be that interested in the president, so she made him a copy, a facsimile of, of President Kennedy's signature. Well, that, that got the ball started. The Robert White was interested in, in anything that had to do with the presidency. So he, he started a, a relationship, a correspondence relationship with Evelyn White. And she would send him little things that the president didn't want. Sometimes they were doodles that he would make during a meeting. Or maybe it would be something that really didn't, didn't amount to anything, just a, a little trinket, memorabilia, trash that was going to be thrown away. And when Robert White died, he had saved over 50,000 pieces of presidential memorabilia, the largest private collection ever of presidential memorabilia that he had made over the years. Well, it started with a relationship. It started with a relationship. And the most valuable things in life start 
with a relationship. Jesus said, behold us, and this is Revelation 3.20, behold I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. That the relationship with Jesus is like one friend dining with another. The relationship with Jesus is like one friend walking with another. The relationship with Jesus is, is to take time to listen. To listen as, as one friend listens to another. That it's time. Time is, is, is the investment in a relationship. Time set aside to dine, to listen, to walk with Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2.20 says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. God has given us great riches and abundance. We've been made prosperous through the great riches of God. But so often, we spend time where we want to give our time. My time is my time. We put our time where we get the investment that we want and we're not rich toward God because it's that relationship, that relationship with Jesus Christ that requires the, the time to dine, to walk, to listen. And Jesus speaks to those who take time to listen. So the invitation this morning is live faithfully. Live faithfully in a relationship with Jesus Christ. It makes us rich, rich toward God. But not only that, the invitation is to, to love boldly is what it means to be rich toward God. Don Locker tells a story about a woman in his congregation. She was moving from her home to assisted living. The assisted living place had a lot of her friends and they were excited about her coming. They were so excited that they had a, a banquet for her. They had balloons, they had a cake, they had a place set aside for her. And when she went there, the, the man sitting right next to her, he was a, a, a handsome gentleman, well-dressed, and she couldn't get her eyes off of him. So much so that <clears throat> she accidentally made him a little uneasy. So finally, she apologized. She said, I'm sorry, I just keep staring at you. You remind me so much of my second husband. To which he said, well, how many times have you been married? She said, once. <laughs> oh, well, that's bold, isn't it? That's just plain old bold. That's sticking your neck out. That's risky. And that's what it means to love. It's to risk, to stick our necks out, to love boldly, not just when it's safe, not just when it's easy, even when it's, even when it's not. A little while back, I told a story about a, a walk I was taking and saw a fellow sitting on a curb. He looked like he was having a tough day and I, I didn't know what to do. So I, I just said, do you mind if I, I sit down next to you? And we struck up a conversation. Well, several months later, one of the members of this congregation said, I remembered that story that you told about sitting down next to the fellow that was on the curb. He said, my wife and I were driving, and we were kind of out in the middle of nowhere. He said, I saw a fellow sitting on a guardrail, and he seemed kind of out of place. So he said, I, my wife and I pulled up, and he said, I asked the fellow. I said, are you doing all right? And the fellow said, no, I'm not. He said, I, I had a heart attack a little while back, and every day I've been trying to walk a little farther and a little farther. And he said, today I believe I walked too far to have the energy to get home. So the member of our church said, well, would you like a ride? The man said, I'd love a ride home. He said, you're an angel sent from God. <laughs> well, I don't know if we've been called to be angels, but I do know we've been called to be the light of the world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. That it, either as individuals or when we come together, we're here to let folks know that there, 
not alone. They're not in the dark. They're not by themselves. That they matter to God and that they, they matter to us. And so this church, that where we come together, I, I hear the same thing again and again and again. Whether it's somebody that's been in one of our su- support groups. We have 40 su- different groups that meet here every week. 40 different meetings, 25 different groups. 40 different meetings every week. And whether it's someone that has been through a support group in the loss of a child or divorce or the loss of a spouse or overcoming addiction, the comment is always the same. Your church has let me know that I'm not alone, that it's what we do together as a city as a city, did we let folks know they matter to God and that they matter to us? Or maybe it's, it's been a job networking. People who've been searching for a job struck up a conversation. They've said, your church has helped me know that I'm not alone. Or sometimes it's, it's been a, in a foreign country. Someone that we're helping that said, it's, it's hard for, for us to believe that some people halfway around the world Christians are letting us know that we're not alone. It's what it means to love boldly. To stick our neck out. To take a risk. It's not just to take care of ourselves and our own. It's to bear one another's burdens. To reach out. church. You and I have been been called not so much as angels but as a light of a world because there's a world out there that needs to know who Jesus is. To know that they're not alone. And it makes us rich, rich toward God. So love boldly. Rich toward God. So live faithfully. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is so give generously. When I was in the sixth grade, I wanted a dirt bike in the worst sort of way. I take that back. Actually, what I wanted was I wanted my father to give me, buy me a dirt bike in the worst sort of way. But I knew that was never going to happen. My father told more stories about how much he hated street bikes that his love for motorcycles on the dirt, well, there, there was no love at all. But I thought maybe, maybe he might let me have one if I, if I bought it myself. So I went to my dad. I said, Dad, if, if I've saved up enough money for a dirt bike, could I buy one myself? Well, the prospects of a sixth grader earning enough money for a motorcycle were pretty much zero. So he said, sure. So I started looking around for ways I might earn money. I saw a kid in the neighborhood as, who was our paper boy. I knew him, knew him pretty well. And he, he delivered to our neighborhood and two or three of the neighborhoods around us. I said, well, how did you get a job as a paper boy? He said, well, my brother didn't want the job, so I, I got it from him. He said, you want it because I don't want it anymore. He said, I'll talk to, the, to my manager and, and maybe you can take over the paper route. So that's what, that's what happened. I went to my father. I said, Dad, would it be okay if I got a paper route? My dad said, sure. So I delivered the Atlanta Journal-Constitution seven days a week and early on Sundays in order to earn money for a dirt bike. Well, I didn't just deliver the papers and then they write me a check and say, here's your bike. I had to collect the money from each home. Spent most of Saturday knocking on the door, Saturday in and Saturday out, to collect $3.35 for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Well, more than once... Somebody, I could see that they'd turn off their light and I'd hear the back door close and get in their car, crank the car in order to, to run away from the paper boy because they owed $3.35. But I knew that if I didn't collect it, I didn't get paid. Well, the money started coming in a little at a time. And then my father told me something that was very helpful. Very, very helpful. He said, Tom, he said, Because you're earning money, you'll want some money to set aside for yourself, some money to set aside to save, and some money money for God and what God's doing in the world. 
He said, but if you start with the money you want for yourself, there's never going to be enough to save and there's never going to be enough for God, for the church. He said, you have to start Start with that 10% set aside for God. That's the, that's the first thing. That's the first fruit. He said, then there'll always be enough to save and enough for what you want. Well, that's when I started, sixth grade. But I want to go ahead and tell you, at that time, it really wasn't that hard because Dad was the one that provided shelter over my head. Dad was the one that provided the food. It was when I started earning more money with a real job. The temptation came in prosperity. The temptation came in abundance. That I wanted the things that I'd always wanted and now I had the time to get it. And would I be rich toward God or just rich toward self? This morning... I want to invite you to enter into a life where you're rich toward God. We're starting our 2023 pledge campaign this Sunday. And this church, this church, we have a a long, long history of, of generous people going where we can put our little with God's much and reach out into a world that needs to know who Jesus is. This year, 180 young people through our student ministries, 180 young people have joined in to, to small groups. This year, so far this year, 93 young people have made a first-time commitment to Jesus Christ in one of our retreats. That we reach out to feed each month groceries and, and home goods to over 200 families on the first Monday of each month. That we put our little with God's much and we're able to do more than any of us could do together. In 2023, our goal is to to hire a a discipleship minister who will help folks grow in, in faith and community. And, and grow the groups that are Sunday school groups. Grow the groups that are Bible study groups. Grow the groups that are small groups and community groups. Well, I want to invite you to take part in what God's doing here through this church. And be rich toward God. And maybe that you've not given before. Or that you've given a little and it's been left over or some to the side. I want to invite you to to grow in your giving. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I don't understand why, but I know that it's true. There's a connection between our heart and our wallet. And if we hold on and grab and hold and, and hoard, as prosperous as you and I are, we won't grow rich toward God. That it's in the giving, the first fruits. It's in the giving, what we have at first, that God begins to grow within us. And I want to invite you into that relationship now. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, you have given us graciously all around us Great, great bounty, great prosperity, the riches of God. Give us those eyes to see and to be thankful. Yes, thankful with our lips. Yes, thankful with our time. Yes, thankful with our hands. And Lord, thankful with our money. I know how tempting it is to, to set aside this, this one part of our lives and say, well, you know, I might, I might be thankful in some other ways, but mine is mine. Well, that's a temptation that's always been there. I ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to help us. Take part in what you're doing in the world. Through our prayers, our presence, our gifts to you, and our service. 
in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image, and what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to Him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.